Hi, everyone. Welcome to Easton Library Community Book Chat. I hope everyone's well. And I'm super excited to welcome today's guest. It is Reverend Allie Brundage, the priest in charge at Christ Church here in Easton. Hey, Reverend Allie, thanks for coming. Thanks so much for having me. It was so nice to have you. Um, so are you're pretty new to Easton, is that right? That's right, I just started in January. So I've been really excited to get to know my parish and the town and such a lovely community. Thank you, it is a lovely community. Um, so how have you been enjoying our town? Like what, I mean, your, your parish and your, um, your um, parishioners are just fantastic. But um, what else about the town are you enjoying? Well, I think they represent the town well, just they have a spirit of kind of of love, you know, that they're for one another. And I get that from everyone I've encountered, um, whether town selectmen, the, the, um, Dr. Bindleglass, who I had an interaction with, to you all at the library. I mean, just so friendly and welcoming and really care about one another and the community. And that's just that's just so nice to be a part of. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. I mean, um, we're happy to have you here also. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how long have you been a Reverend, Reverend Allie? <laughs> um, so gosh, it's coming up on my eighth anniversary in September. Oh, that's exciting. Um, as a priest and as a deacon before that. Um, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it's a great privilege to be a priest in this world, which um, I'm lucky enough to be. <laughs> that's great. Well, I mean, yeah, it's fantastic and you are, you know, a very good example of that, I think, for, for our town, and we're so happy to have you. Oh, thanks. thanks. So, um, I'm glad you could come today, and um, I'm so excited that you chose a YA book, because mm. I'm the uh, youth services librarian, and I get to order all the YA materials, so I am super excited. So, you chose this beautiful book called Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I did. Which is, um, let's see, did it win? It was an honor, it was a Prince Honor book. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Well, so first I'll say, uh, you know, I, I just love young people. And so if there are any young people tuning in or parents of young people in that adolescent range, I think they're. They, they often get the moniker, they're the hope of the future, but I think they're the hope of the present. They bring such thoughtfulness and energy and um, creativity to, to the present moment. And it's always a privilege of mine to get to, to know young people where they are in their journeys. And so I think I, I gravitate to YA for those reasons. Um, and my, my previous job was as chaplain at Chote Rosemary Hall up in Wallingford. Um, so that's a high school. So that, um, and, I, yeah, this book, I don't remember how I came across it, but I was so delighted when I did. Um, I, you know, I have a public library subscription wherever I am, and I, I listened to it actually first and read it again later. Um, and, you know, it's a love story. It's a love story, and it's a story about two young men wrestling with identity. Um, they're both Mexican American, and they encounter each other in just a lovely way that, that chance encounters happen. Um, and each of them in their own families has various intersecting identities and stories. And I, um, another part of myself is I love stories, both fictional and I, um, I've, I teach you a history in a variety of contexts and um, stories shape who we are. And, and so both our collective stories, our family stories and our individual stories. And I think for teens, that's just exploding as young people are becoming who they are, understanding the world around them, making sense of it, deciding who they will be and how they'll act. Um, and I think this just captures some of that beauty of, of the real struggles that young people go through, um, but also the joy and of that discovery, yeah. There is so much wonderful YA literature being produced right now. It is really amazing. Um, that's what I try to read pretty much um, exclusively right now, since you know that's my like section of the library. And I mean, I could just happily just stick with that. It's for it's, sure. Yeah, it's so great I, I for love kids. It I read it 
still, even though I'm not necessarily working directly with the young people anymore for those, or yeah, because I love it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Um, so this, that kind of falls into my next question of what do you like to read? You said basically just like some good human stories. Definitely, I'm drawn to a good story and that could come in a whole variety of ways. So, so YA, I do love to read. I think they tell good stories generally and um, there's a, both a realism and a hopefulness to them. Um, uh, uh, I like magical realism. I think mm -hmm. that which inspires us to think beyond what we imagine as possible is a, is a good thing. Obviously, I'm a person who believes in faith and, and um, hope and um, imagination and all the possibilities that come from those gifts, those spiritual gifts, which I think are accessible to all of us, irregardless if we believe in a, a God or not. Um, and uh, so magical realism for that reason speaks to me. And then good history, like I mentioned, I'm a history teacher, but good historical fiction really touches me as well. I was really, when I had to pick a book, I was really torn. There's so many, uh, ta Coates's Water Dancer really moved me recently, um, uh, which has that sort of both magical realism and historical fiction quality to it. And um, yeah, many, <laughs> many, many others. The Is it the overstory Richard Powers was just like tr a tree centers in that book in such a profound way and dealing with the world around us in its eco, um, beauty as well as eco uh, crisis and uh, yeah I found all these books just move me I think ones that touch on the truths of life and offer some beauty some meaning making some sense of possibility or imagination creativity um, those are those are what I gravitate to do you prefer to read a physical book or you said you listened to it originally do you like to listen to audiobooks also Both and I, yeah. I, I would love to curl up with a you know a hard copy paper book I have a whole you can see part of my bookshelf here so um I love 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 that feeling and um and also I do really like listening it you know both in drives or in walks um I'm a very um I believe in movement and feel that in my body I'm a kinesthetic learner um so something about being able to be on the go, but but listen is really grounding for me. And then also, you know, that it brings back childhood. I'm in my forties, but back, you know, getting read to is a beautiful thing. I come from a, a family of teachers. And so we were definitely were read books. Uh, that was a great gift they gave us that love of love of books. Um, and, and so there's a familiarity and a comfort there too, but both and. Yeah, there's something about being read to that is very comforting. Mm -hmm. And especially if there is a good narrator, it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a it's a very it's a really unique experience. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's great that there's there's hardly a book that you can't find an audio version of, which is nice. Yeah. And sometimes when authors read them themselves, um you yeah. even you know you get a, you get their voice in an even deeper way. And yeah. Yeah, that is great when they can do that, when that's a possibility. So, um, well, Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. We have it here at the Easton Library. We have it in, you know, nice old fashioned book type. And we also have it in, these are fantastic. This is an audio book, it's called A Play Away. Mm -hmm. So it's a small device. It's a little pre-loaded one book and you can, Cool. Just plug your earbuds in there and listen while you walk, or you can stick it in your auxiliary uh, port in your car and listen to it, and those are fantastic. So we have the book in both of those forms, and you can just uh, come to the Easton Library website and hit uh, search the catalog to find those copies, and um, you can come in and either check them out in person, or we can have them for you available for curbside pickup. Yeah. yeah. So Reverend Ali, thank you so much for oh, talking sure. to us and Thanks. for recommending this fantastic book, which I'm sticking on my list for sure. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I hope I hope lots of people check it out. It really is lovely and meaningful. <laughs> and I hope, hope that so. will be your experience in reading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I know um, people this week are probably celebrating Passover and Holy Week. And so I, I wish you all who celebrate a very blessed celebrations. Thank you. And to you too. Thank you. 
All right, and to everybody in Easton, thank you so much for joining us for Easton Community Book Chat, and we hope to see you again very soon. Bye.